Okay, so I thought I'd go over just a couple of words on my uh, first aid uh, pack. This is something you can use for the home or for a bug out, um, but uh, my uh, general premise is that if I'm bugging out, I'm most likely bugging out to the woods. So what I try to do is learn what plants are naturally relevant to any type of needs I may have once out there. My biggest concerns may be things like constipation, uh, inability to urinate, cuts, abrasions, uh, and bad feet. Uh, for feet, uh, you can try something like smooth uh, wood like birch bark, uh, duct tape if you have it, but it's not really there, leaves and small uh, like leaves. But in general, uh, without going into too much about the nature stuff, these are just first aid things that I've sort of uh, accumulated. It's not all here, but some of it is. So first off, you might want a little bit of baking soda. That might be in your cooking kit. Same with salt and same with some honey uh, or sugar, um, but honey is, is ideal uh, just because it can be used to... Uh, put a coating uh, for antibacterial and uh, antioxidizing but you may want to have oxidized but if you want something blocked off from uh, infection you can use honey but as far as moist towelettes i have a whole bunch here and to be honest i, I say use water if you have water available use water but if you don't have, and you can use a filter like this. The good thing about a filter, I won't take it off, but this thing here, if you need to make a, well, if you're a surgeon, um, if you need to make a trachea or otherwise, you might be able to incorporate something like this. Also for giving mouth to mouth for somebody you don't know, you can take off this little end and it's a tube for breath tubing. Um, but you have lots of little uh, moist towelettes of various types. Um, like you have the wet naps and serviettes and alcohol swabs. The alcohol swabs can also serve as uh, another purpose for starting fires. But once again, I say carry lighters. They have all these uh, emergency fire starters and they work really well at different things. Uh, but, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, if you have lighters, use lighters. They're probably the easiest thing to use and they have a million uses. Uh, they last a long time. So you have alcohol swabs. They're supposed to be able to clean, but from what I've seen, they really don't do too much. Um, they're not uh, end all. And then you also have the benzalokinonium chloride in towelettes. Um, so it's a benzalokinonium uh, chloride. And this one is uh, has it's considered antiseptic. So this may be a little bit better than this alcohol one. Uh, to say the least, if you're really worried about infection. Now, you know, other than that, there's all the gauze, gauzes, small little gauze, gauze, um, or alcohol swabs. I have hard liquor also, but not for my bug out unless I really want it, uh, both as a fuel source um, and a couple other purposes. But yeah, this is another example of the benzenol chloride ones. And these are the ones you generally get, uh, they're more like um, the iodide stuff, sort of how I see them. Um, these ones uh, I consider a little bit more, but this one here has alcohol in it. And this is 1 to 750, while this is 0.4%. Not that that means anything to most people. It's more of them. Alcohol preps, little more uh, little band aids like you know little cuts for for things sutures um, for stuff this size normally you're not gonna really have to worry about a cut like this you can probably just cover it over and you don't need to really use something like this um, it's more for morale purposes is what I would say although I'm probably gonna maybe use one of those on my foot which got scraped and burned now. Aspirin is really weird for a bug out. I would probably never take aspirin in a wooded area if it's uh, Boreal or uh, Laurentian type stuff because, you know, I know what trees have ASA in them. So for me to take uh, aspirin with me is just weird because I can 
chew on bark and I have much the same effect. But, uh, you know, if you have it, it's uh, there if you don't have time to go and uh, sequester a tree. Um, now, in addition to my baking soda and salt, another basic thing, I only have one strip in here, which is basically two doses um, of uh, potassium iodide. Now, potassium iodide is primarily used for the uh, uh, thyroid glands during radiation exposure. Um, so that's kicking around in there, just because uh, this is more my bug out than my bug in. I have more of them, but I would never expect to use more than that. If I survive more than that, then... They have other things to worry about. And then larger size bandage. I consider these things a little more relevant, but they're still not, uh, like this is a big patch. This is a very big patch. This is for an actual wound. It's not a field dressing, but uh, like for uh, full uh, gauze bandage. Uh, but uh, the, the field dressings, like the gauze bandage ones are probably the ones you really kind of want to go for. And uh, these ones are, uh, an anti uh, anti uh, inflammatory. Uh, I got these in Mexico. Um, I was sort of held by customs because they're not legal in the U.S. But somehow they got through with my stuff into Canada. So I don't know exactly what happened with that. They like confiscated them, but they missed some. And I was like, well, you took them. What happened to them? And then when I got back to Canada, I'm like, oh, here they are. Here they didn't find them, but. Uh, they somehow got through my baggage. They didn't steal them, apparently. They just didn't find them. Um, and then some more bandages. Once again, so bandages of this size, these are the type that you use practical for home boo-boos. But in, in reality, band, it's it's these size things. These size in the field dressings. You don't want to carry a lot of field dressings, so these things may do for non-gunshot wounds. Um, like this. This is the type of size of bandit you want. These these ones are laughable, and these ones are the ones you use at home, but they're not usually not needed. They're more for, you know, mid-sized wounds that are scrapes and slight cuts and slight burns. Now, sadly, my gloves got sort of damaged, but when I can get a hold of these, these I want these things. Because, first off, it's always good to keep yourself sterile in a way, especially from infection, but... Uh, Sadly, I had a bottle of uh, iodine um, that leaked and it uh, ruined my gloves and whatnot, but surgical gloves are always nice to have, especially uh, if you want to keep things clean as possible. Chapstick. You would be surprised. I got this as a little gift during a, a little show for Rogers TV, um, just like an OPP chapstick thing. Um, but. Yeah, these chapstick is always good. It, it has more than just usages, but during a, a bug out or emergency situation, chapstick's actually a valuable commodity. It's a valuable thing to have uh, because uh, moisture control and uh, parching is actually very common, uh, especially from sun exposure and stuff like that. Another band aid. Now, these things. Um, or another pharmaceutical, and uh, ooh. I'm trying to remember what it's for. I can't remember this one, but it's uh, I think for liver function. I can't really comment on that one. Okay, so then uh, I have some common painkillers. These are just uh. You know, uh, T2, T3 type deals which are, are just pretty common pain painkillers. Uh, so these things, uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of painkiller if you need it. There's a certain amount uh, you can get that's legal. Unfortunately, it doesn't go to the point that uh, it's uh, beyond there. I can't really say much on that. Now, I don't consider these too useful. They don't really cut anything. It's almost laughable. Um, you know, they probably can't even cut paper. So, <laughs> these things, not too useful. Now, the big actual scissors or the really sharp scissors, yes. These things, not too useful. 
but they're in the kit anyway. Safety pin. These things can have usages, but um, getting slivers out, things like that. Um, also for bandaging stuff up. Now this here is uh, for uh, breathing. I'm not sure how uh, usable it still is because it's quite aged, but uh, you know those wake-me-ups um, when somebody gets knocked out and stuff, but these things are supposed to wake people up. And then just another small little knife. Now these things are a little bit more useful for cutting um, and a can opener. But it can also be used for tightening with string and stuff like that. This is a fairly good scalpel, but I have an actual separate scalpel for it. And this is in my water kit. So it's, it's actually not too uh, safe, but if you ever do need a uh, syringe, uh, it, these can use as, be used as a syringe, but they're not overly sterile, so you might want to sterilize them first, like boiling them or otherwise. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you would need, but if you need to do an uh, impromptu transfusion of blood, uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not a doctor, so I would never expect to do that. But uh, for clean water, these things just basically go through here. They can clean these out too. But the water filter is good to have uh, clean water. This one's a 0 0.05 micron filter, so it's relatively good. Okay. And then uh, space blanket. These are good in survival situations, not only because they're good for uh, keeping you a little warm or keeping the sun off you if you're in a sunny environment, but they're also used for shock treatment. And they look really cool. And it, they're in here, but I, I'm not 100% sure why, but just uh, some Strike Anywhere matches, more or less. They're not wax coated. But I have a million different types of matches. These just happen to be in my first aid kit. But it's also sulfur, I think, uh, on the tips. So you can scrape them off and use them uh, as a uh, cauterization agent uh, by using the scraping for the match heads. And a, a wax candle, because you never know when you need to heat something or a heat for warmth. Um, sort of a beeswax thing. And I also have uh, some of this in here. It's birch bark. It can be used for as a fire starter, uh, foot aid. Um, you know, you have duct tape uh, for blisters, but you can also potentially try to use some uh, birch bark. And uh, yeah, that's basically my uh, first aid kit. There's maybe one or two other things kicking around here, but. That's that's a real basic uh, first aid kit. Most of it's just to clean the wound and treat treat it. Um, pain control. As far as like snake bite kits and uh, stuff like that, there's no poisonous snakes up here. Um, so basically, you drink clean water and only eat plants that you know are uh, edible, and you should be generally okay as far as getting. Uh, other types of sickness, like major wounds, stuff like that. I'm not a doctor, so, um, you know, you can feel dress something, but uh, beyond that, um, I'm not sure if you can really expect to, uh, you know, somebody fractures the leg, carrying around. Uh, carrying around splints and stuff like that, you know, I, I, I don't really expect, this is more like, you know, prevent infection, and, uh, you know, if it's worse than that, then it's uh, pretty bad. You're going to have to do something on the spot with uh, sticks and wood. Because, um, frankly, any type of serious injury, it's pretty much SOL and game over. You injure yourself out in the, in the woods, like a serious injury, you are screwed. Um, that's the polite way of saying it. Um, if you're way out there like a bear attack, wolf attack, you know, the chances of getting back to civilization on foot after a serious attack are not very likely. Like, you can take some pain relief, bandage up uh, any major wounds, uh, maybe use some any extra clothing you have for a tourniquet or uh, 
otherwise but uh yeah like i having this amount of alcohol swabs and otherwise only reason it would be in there is as an emergency fire starter um the anti uh the benz benzol uh, chloride stuff is more of an antiseptic cleaner the aspirin you know it's more of a joke i'm not really sure why why it's in here but it's lighter than a tree but it's, it makes it faster but I don't consider aspirin to be, it acts as an anti-inflammatory too, but I have the other more uh, major anti-inflammatories in here, the uh, Volotrin, which is uh, Dysysonian and Gragius, um, something like that, but that's it.